Take somebody's hand if you will. I've got the victory. And certainly as we considered what to pray about today, and we we understand as I was talking to Tiffany that prayer without any personal action is to deny the whole section of watch because watch suggests human involvement prayer to God obviously for him to make a difference but who is he going to make the difference through when Jesus prayed he said the harvest is plenteous the laborers are few pray that your father send laborers into the harvest and the very next verse he sent them do you remember that scripture he says pray because the harvest of course is plenteous the labors of few pray that your father send laborers into the vineyard and the very next chapter he sent them with all that's happening in our world with all that's going on around us and we're in this windowless building in a sanctuary and what a sanctuary it is because we have absolutely no windows to the outside we're sequestered secluded in this house but maybe God wants to send us maybe the prayer that we make is a prayer of empowerment that he'll help us to make sure that his will is done on earth as it is in heaven uh, look at the person beside you and, and just ask him uh, how many skills do you have at that same person and say the Lord have need of thee Father we come in the name of Jesus and we're praying now Lord for the condition of the world for shootings in schools and in the inner city schools but shootings in schools and we're hurting each other in the streets and we're saying that you have plucked a flower for your rose garden but we know better Lord that you're not in the business of taking lives early when you have given us 70 years plus reason of strength 80 years that's what you told us so now we need you to help us to fix the situation so we're praying for you to empower us give us the intellectual cognitive ability to fix the situation and help us, Lord, not to think only of ourselves, but to think of the others in this community and in the world who need somebody to stand up on their behalf. Empower your children. Lord, you didn't give us the Holy Spirit just to shout and just to speak in other tongues, but you gave us the Holy Spirit that we might be empowered to right the wrongs in the world. So here am I, Lord, send me. Here am I, Lord, send me. 
we're all gathered in this house to be empowered to serve and we claim the victory right now we claim the victory over the enemy we claim the victory over the situations of our time and we rebuke every spirit that is against you right now and we claim it done in the name of Jesus so send us into the world send us with power send us with deliverance send us with anointing and I claim it right now in the name of Jesus and every person in here that wants to serve open the door and release us now and we claim it done in the name of Jesus somebody open your mouth and declare here am I Lord send me give God some praise in his house Give God. Here am I. Amen. We want to, you may be seated. We want to celebrate everybody in this house who was here on Friday with our reentry program. And we thank God for Sister Jean Franklin and, and for Pastor Joe Paul. Amen. I've been struggling, trying to get better. And so, sort of tried to get better. Still trying to get better. But we honor God because we realize now, in, and my dear friend, uh, Brother Edward Glenn, he was just fantastically awarded in New York City for his boss program. Amen for the work he does with young men. And New York City decided to say thanks for all of his energy and, and certainly we can't have him here and not say thank God for him being in this house. Amen. <laughs> Working diligently to make things, to make things happen and to the reentry program uh, because if you're not dealing with young men in crisis, you're really not having church. Amen. Really, one out of every three of our boys is in the system. And if we're not addressing their issues, then we're just, we're having church, but we're not ministering. So we honor God for those who work diligently in that field. Uh, it's marvelous to walk into this house and see Sister Tammy Hatton. Amen. We thank God for her being here today and and if I see my son in the audience then uh, that means that some of my family's members are here and so I see Denise amen Dr. Hillary Jones amen Lena's in the house Tiffany's in the house <laughs> amen so so I honor God for family and I'm glad that they came to be a part of this church celebration. Every day is a celebration. Uh, I'm learning now as I get older that every day that you're on this earth, you got to give God celebration. Uh, it's offering time, amen. It's offering time. And, and it's interesting that we we're appreciative of everyone for all of your kindness and all of your, for all of your, excuse me, your giving in. And to those of you who have tuned in from around the world, we honor the Lord for your giving and for your generosity to the city of refuge. And we just pray that God will continue to bless you as you have helped to bless us as you've seeded into this house. And we pray that God will keep us blessing you as you have blessed us and as you gather your offering get the best gift you can with your tithe and understand that you just can't beat God giving there's absolutely no way there's no way that you can beat God giving it's just the fact that you're clothed and in your right mind is a blessing from God and the fact that he's watched over all of us and he's kept us and Many times when something calamitous happens in our lives, we 
somewhere along the line disobeyed him unless it's a job experience many times the responsibility for our behavior and isn't it interesting I've discovered that he gives us so much grace and there's so many times when I should have been wiped out that he he interceded on my behalf and uh, you know one day I'm going to argue with you the the issue of grace and principle the issue of grace in juxtaposition to principle and where does grace really come in when an individual is unprincipled that's 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 something to argue that's that's a great message how much grace do you get when you are required to go by principle how much yes have you ever uh, have you ever gained something by mistake? Amen. Have, have, you, have you ever made money by mistake? Mistakenly, you got richer. Have you ever bettered yourself by mistake? something to argue raise your offering to heaven father we thank you for every gift every giver bless everyone in the house return it to us return it to our neighbors bless our brothers and our sisters bless us until we don't have to be envious bless us until we eliminate all jealousy bless us so that we don't have to contemplate stealing contemplate taking something from somebody else Bless us until we don't have to be manipulative. Bless us until we don't have to conspire. Bless us until we're satisfied. And so satisfied that we can bless others out of what you blessed us with. And we speak that right now. Let it overflow. Let it run into somebody else. Bless us until we eliminate homelessness. Bless us until we eliminate poverty. And I pray right now that you increase our coffers so that we might bless others and I speak it in Jesus name Amen, Amen, Amen uh, Are you bringing Tammy? Oh Amen, what a blessing As you're putting your seeds in the ground I know that many of you are believing God for so many things and sometimes it feels like he's far away and that he's forgotten about you. Am I the only person that feels that way? But I promise you that you're on his mind at all times. I believe that I was on his mind the day he hung on the cross. And so even though he may not come when I want him, I know that he's always going to be on time. You know my name. Hallelujah. In Acts chapter 1 and verse 7 and 8, but to be contextual, I should actually begin reading at verse 4. And being assembled together with them, commanded them that they should not depart from Jerusalem, but wait for the promise of the Father, which saith that ye have heard of me. For John truly baptized with water, but ye shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost, not many days hence. When they therefore were come together, they asked of him, saying, Lord, wilt thou at this time Restore again the kingdom of Israel. And he said unto them, It is not for you to know the times or the seasons which the Father hath put in his own power, but ye shall receive power. After that the Holy Ghost has come upon you, and ye shall be witnesses unto me, 
both in Jerusalem and in all Judea and in Samaria and unto the uttermost parts of the earth. Just look at your neighbor and say, you have been empowered. And look at somebody and say, you have power. Uh, sometimes we, we actually don't know the questions to ask, even in the presence of the Lord. Sometimes we just don't know what to ask. And uh, Paul, of course, he recognized that from a theological position, and here's what he said. He said, for we know not what we should pray form as we ought but the spirit itself maketh intercession for us now admittedly the disciples had asked Jesus many good questions throughout his ministry and they received answers which obviously enhanced their spiritual growth and I'm convinced that God operates within the parameters of our lives to bring us to places where we have to ask the question. And the question, of course, takes us to the next level. I don't think anybody seriously grows in God when they've never had to ask the question. Because he pulls us in such a way and he stretches us in such a way that in order to get to the next level, you literally have to question the level that you're on. He takes you out of that comfort zone, that place of satisfaction and that place of sequester. And he forces you to ask the question just through the process of living. And oftentimes, the questions that we ask are based upon our need for a solution to the problems that we find ourselves in, and this is where we grow. I've said to you before, and I'll say it again, that nobody grows when everything is going well. And the utility of your capacity is seen when God uses you to operate within a parameter that is awfully despicable and he makes you the solution. Yeah, interesting. When our requests are based on traditional nationalistic tendencies for political or social superiority, and when our requests are selfishly prompted because of a lack of understanding of the will of God, then we automatically ask amiss. There is something about the freshness of the question. There's something about the question that's not attached to anything selfish. The question that's not as attached to self-aggrandizement, the question that's not, a set, not uh, attached to our superior thinking is the question that gets the kind of answers that we need. It's the question that is prompted by the circumstances and situations of our lives to make us grow into more powerful people than simply asking questions out of selfish aggrandizement. So consequently, as James puts it, we ask amiss. And for this reason, however, we can understand the dilemma of the disciples. Uh, for three years, they're under the greatest teacher the world has and will ever know. And they still didn't know that Jesus was not primarily concerned about individuals being superior and uh, he's not concerned about self-aggrandizement. Uh, the difficulty is that they are seeing an opportunity now to excel beyond the people around them. And it's difficult to see how they miss the fact that he 
was simply a servant of the people. Uh, I'm going to take my time. I can hoop any time. The critical thing is to be empowered not for one's self-aggrandizement or one's superiority thinking but empowerment comes for those of us who are servants there's no sense in giving you power to to lord it over somebody else but the power that he gives is power to serve and power to make an individual a blessing uh, their personal, political, or social philosophies uh, were not significant to Jesus. And their personal self-righteousness, their promotion in his name, and not committed to the service that he rendered. Uh, isn't it Jesus who came and he declared that I didn't come to uh, be ministered unto, but rather I came to minister to those. Uh, it's an interesting dynamic, but the most powerful of us in this building are not those of us who have everybody serving us. The most powerful of us in this building is measured by how much service we render to others. Uh, uh, he committed to the cohesive building of his father's spiritual kingdom and with men and women who are committed completely to his will uh, to the point where it really doesn't matter how much of your life you give up uh, he who seeketh to save his life shall lose it but he that loseth his life for my name's sake shall find it it is a really interesting dynamic because I think what has happened to the 21st century church is we have measured our walk with God by how much personal achievement we can receive. We have actually turned the whole issue of service into being served. And we feel as if in the 21st century church that we are somebody when we're able to buy certain things, live on a certain level, and operate within the parameters of what we regard as wealth. We have literally taken the gospel and we have messed it up with Americanism. And we preach capitalism for gospel. I, I hate to bust your bubble uh, for those of you who came to Jesus to rub the Bible in the name of Jesus and the magic genie would come out and ask what do you desire or what do you receive but there is no strength in thinking like the world the strength is in thinking like I am here to do the will of him who has sent me and so if I lose certain things on the way I'll gain certain things because my life is not simply measured by what I have, but it's measured by who I am. We all, in seeking our own success, will often die for a variety of personal reasons. But when we seek his will, when we go after what he wants us to do, then his will will find life in us in a way. I, I am convinced now, more than ever before, that self-center instead of Christ-center uh, misses Christ's intention of spirituality and it breeds division for those there is no common denominator. Because here's what he said. He said, my kingdom is not of this world. So you can't measure the power of what you're doing by what's happening within your world. It is, I am operating in this world to establish his world within the confines of my world. And in order to do that, I have to sacrifice a whole lot of stuff in order to bless others for the kingdom's sake. Uh, you know, we... Can I preach like I feel it? Uh, we have built 
too many empires at the cost of the kingdom. And what has happened is we have operated in building our own personal empires to achieve our own personal goals without giving any thought to the kingdom of God. The kingdom of God is not measured by financial success. The kingdom of God is measured by how much of yourself will you give in order to establish the kingdom of God. Ah, I feel a preach coming on. Uh, this is why he declares, I go to prepare a place for you. Not I come to prepare, but I go to prepare. Which means now that I have to think Holy Ghost power, I have to think church power, I have to think kingdom power. Because what he says to me is, ye shall receive power. You shall receive power to be my witnesses. Now it's interesting that the question has to be asked, well what will I witness? Because if I'm a witness of Christ, then what will I witness? When he walked into the world, and he could have come in any way he chose, but he was born in a manger. Uh, I have listened many times to the health, wealth, and prosperity presentations, and I listen oftentimes to just how erroneous the presentation is, because Jesus said, foxes have holes, the birds of the air have nests, but the Son of Man hath nowhere to lay his head. Well, if you have nowhere to lay your head, you're homeless. You see how quiet we get? And because this goes against the grain of everything we have heard. If you have nowhere to lay your head, you are homeless. And he alluded to the fact that the foxes have holes. He says the birds of the air have nests. But I have nowhere to lay my head. But the homeless Jesus walked on water. Uh, the homeless Jesus healed the sick. The homeless Jesus raised the dead. The homeless Jesus changed the lives of everybody in the world, including you and I. So the power is not in having a home. The power is in having the Spirit of God operating within the servants of God that they might change the world. God did not give me the Holy Ghost to change my situation. He gave me the Holy Ghost to change somebody else. Uh, uh, you all sit down. I got a little work to do. Uh, you shall receive dunamis. And uh, dunamis here now is inherent power. The Old Testament saints did not have the inherent power because inherent is defined as existing in someone as a natural and inseparable quality or right. It's a sort of inborn thing. Uh, I am convinced that when an individual meets God, they literally meet themselves. Because when the Holy Ghost comes in, the Holy Ghost is searching for and exposing all of the powers that you have that God can use. You have to understand that if he's operating in the spirit and the spirit is connecting to your spirit, then the spirit needs your intellectuality, it needs your energy, it needs your drive. The spirit of God needs everything that you are in order to function. Uh, this is why God takes us through so many things in order to qualify us to operate within the parameters of his spirit. I have learned just last year, and I'm telling you I learned so many lessons, it's still, I'm still feeling the vestiges of the lessons I've learned. And the lessons I've learned is that God has to put me through certain things to expand my thinking to handle the power of his spirit. In other words, he has to build my character, take my character from being self-centered and put my character on the needs of others 
because I have lived my life pretty much concerned about myself. I've heard people say, well, you got to take care of yourself. And I've learned now that in order to take care of myself, it has to be in the context of being able to bless others. Uh, can, I, can I go over that again? Uh, if a mother is in the house with, with children, uh, the significance of her taking care of herself is to make sure that she's able to bless her children. If she is to take care of herself at expense of her children, then she would not serve them. I am finding out that fathers, if they're going to bless their homes, they have to take care of themselves in order to be able to function to bless their children. I'm finding out that if you have put yourself in somebody's life and you've made yourself significant to that life, then you cannot be AWOL because once you've made yourself important for somebody else's life, then you have to show up whenever you're needed. You can't be hidden or you can't be off somewhere when you've made yourself significant. What the Lord is saying to me through the experiences that I've gained is I didn't give you those experiences simply for yourself. And I didn't give you those experiences now to begin to protect and cover yourself. I gave you those experiences to open you so you're wide enough to reach people you could not reach before you had those experiences. In other words, I want to put my Holy Spirit in somebody who's wide enough and selfless enough to bless people with the power that I have given and if you're going to be my witness woo, then my witness is a sacrificial witness because my witness put me on a cross and if you're going to be my witness you have to be sacrificial in your presentation of who I am Ah, I feel like preaching here. Have I told you touch your neighbor is coming? You see, the volume of Israel's relationship with God is replete with the activities of the Holy Spirit in her history. It begins, of course, with creation as the beginning of the Spirit's work. Earth was without form and void, and the Spirit moved upon the face of the deep. Anytime the Spirit moves, something is going to change. Anytime the Spirit moves, uh -huh, I need to say that again, something is going to change. I can operate church, and we can have church, and we can just have service. We can have singing, preaching, praying. We can receive offering. And it goes on and on, but nothing changes until the Spirit moves. Anytime the Spirit moves, something has to be different. You cannot have the power of God in your life and stay the same. Uh, absolutely impossible for the Holy Ghost to come uh, and, and you stay the same. It, it can't happen. Uh, just give somebody a high five real quick and say that will never happen. Anytime God moves in you, you are now a different person person because you've got an influence in you that you never had before because when God moves in you he connects to your spirit so what we have is forming and shaping and vitalizing and renewing and beautifying because whenever the spirit of God comes every demon has got to go I don't care what people say about rebuking devils out of you he can't rebuke a devil out of somebody who's filled with the Holy Ghost because if you're filled with the Holy Ghost can no devil stay nowhere close uh, I, I feel a breakthrough coming already uh, the psalmist declared when thou send thy spirit they are created and you renew the face of the earth spirit filled folks just don't sit around and wait for things to come 
came to pass. Spirit-filled folks operate in the will of God and they make things happen. Spirit-filled folks just don't sit and wait to receive. Spirit-filled folks operate in the face of the enemy and they stand up and make things happen in spite of what the enemy is trying to do. Uh, I'm almost finished. Uh, give somebody a high five and say, God didn't fill me with the spirit uh, to sit around and let the devil control my space. He filled me with the spirit to break the yoke of Satan in the community that I live in. I don't need an excuse. I've got the power of God. Oh, I feel the Holy. Uh, can I go another way? I, I talk to you all the time about angels and, and, and many times and uh, I'm very careful as I approach this today because everybody's conceptualization of God is allowed and you should have your concept of God. My concept of God is a little bit different from others and it should be because it's idiosyncratic. And my concept of God is that I'm filled with the spirit of God. If I'm filled with the Spirit of God, then I have in me the most powerful spirit in the universe because it is the Spirit of God. Now, many times what we do is we ignore the fact that we have this power operating in us and we sit around and act as if we need to be served and we don't have the power to serve. Our attitude is that I have an angel watching over me and I have an angel protecting me and an angel making sure that everything is okay. And what that does is it eliminates the, the strength of who I am in the face of God and it makes me a bystander waiting for some angel to work out my situation. I have never seen an angel angel come and walk into Ferguson or go down to the school in Santa Fe or, or go to any of these places. I've not seen an angel work any of that out. If any of that is going to be worked out, it's got to be worked out with an individual or by an individual who's operating in the will of God. If I'm operating in the will of God, then I need the spirit of God to operate. And as far as I'm concerned, the angels are just bystanders and at best they're messengers. If they're messengers, then they have to bring a message from God. And if they're bringing a message from God, it's not the angel who protects, but it's the message that protects. God has never asked an angel to feed the poor. God never asked an angel to visit when he was in prison. He said, when I was hungry, you didn't feed me when I was oh yes when I was in prison you didn't visit me when I was sick you didn't come to see about me he did not make that the responsibility of an angel he made that the responsibility of the individual that he put his spirit in you cannot bless yourself by yourself you have to bless others by yourself. What we have decided to do is sit around waiting for God to bring us a whole lot of stuff so we can drive good, look good, dress good, uh, act good. But at the end of the day, when the Spirit of God comes, it comes to empower us. What do I need power for? To get the devil out of my house, to get the devil out of my neighborhood to get the devil out of my community that's why i'm empowered i'm empowered to change things give somebody a high five for the third time and say neighbor i'm a changer i've been given the power of the holy ghost to change things to change attitudes to drive the devil out of here oh god i feel the holy ghost in the old 
Old Testament, they had special gifts. They had craftsman skills, all traced to the Spirit's action. They recognized the Holy Spirit operating on in Judges men in crisis. He came on them in Judges. And in Ezekiel, he entered them temporarily. He rested on them in Isaiah. And he stirred them up in Jude. Uh, the Spirit achieved great deeds through those God men who he chose to act upon but there was no abiding in the spirit he led by the pillar of cloud he led by a pillar of fire he led by strong men influenced by God's spirit but there was no dunamis there was no dunamis for everyone that's natural and inseparable uh, there were flashes of power but generally God's people were crushed and they were all formless less like the prophets and the mighty men without the spirit they could not achieve God's mission in the earth they failed to achieve the land of Canaan through led by manpower giants were too big only two of the original made it in miserable failures professional complainers defeat thinkers constant doubters selfish quitters seasons frowners no wonder the prophets look to a better day the prophets look to see the day when things would be different isn't it Moses who declared would that all God's people would prophesy he had to come to the place where he didn't need a few among us to have it but he need everybody in here to have it that's why when Zechariah saw it he said it's not by power it's not by might but by my spirit saith the Lord Jesus then declared the word and the spirit and the blood agree in one so Joel heralded power for everybody pull on your neighbor say I have it in the last day saith the Lord I shall pour out my spirit upon all flesh your sons and daughters will prophesy your old men shall dream dreams and your young men shall see visions I uh, wish you'd pull on your neighbor say it's vision time not just for yourself but for what God has empowered you to do I'm not only thinking of myself but I need power for everybody that's why we preach the name of Jesus and that's why we pray for folk to receive the Holy Ghost and then when we come to that package of natural and inseparable quality of God the word the blood and the spirit agree in one so now Jesus can declare to me the spirit of the Lord is upon me because he hath anointed me to preach to heal to deliver to recover to set at liberty when last give somebody a high five say when last have you preached when last have have you healed when last have you delivered somebody and when last have you recovered when last have you set at liberty uh, I've come to preach to the poor we might as well have church Pat I've come to heal the brokenhearted I've come to release the captives I've come to give sight to the blind I've come to set at liberty the bruised that's why the power of God has come to us so I don't think political power I don't think personal riches I don't think better than you power but I think I'm able to serve to bless and to lift up somebody's life so that's why 50 days after the feast of the first fruits of the feast of Pentecost 50 days after the feast of the first barley 50 days after offering of the barley sacrifice 50 days of Pentecost begins and ends with the ingathering of the wheat uh, harvest so now I've come to tell you it's time to rise 
rise up let the enemy know I'm not coming in my own name but I'm coming in the name of Jesus I feel like preaching in here what is my responsibility not just to dress up to come to church and sit in church and enjoy the service but my job is to get out in the middle of the world and let my light so shine 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 what's the energy of my light what's the power that energizes my light it's the power of the Holy Ghost it's the power of the Spirit of God and I can't act like I don't have power because he said I want you to stay until the power comes upon you don't go out without the power because if you don't have the power the devil will drive you crazy but when I walk in the power of the Spirit of God can I preach so I can feel it he's got to use my hands he's got to use my feet he's got to use my mouth he's got to use my creativity use my attitude use my drive you can't be filled with the power of the Holy Ghost and not cry out like Isaiah here am I send me I feel the power of the Holy Spirit give somebody high five and say neighbor don't you hear the Lord calling you don't you hear the Lord reaching for you he didn't give you a car just for yourself he didn't give you a house just for yourself he didn't put money in your pocket just for yourself he didn't give you wisdom just for yourself he didn't put you through just for yourself but he blessed you to bless somebody else to strengthen somebody else can I preach like I feel it pull on your neighbor say who's dying around you who's falling off around you well that's the person God sent you to somebody's telling me I don't know what to do and I know what my calling is I'll tell you what your calling is wherever somebody's in trouble wherever somebody's broken hearted wherever somebody's failing to be all that they can be that's your calling it ain't the pulpit it's the corner I feel like preaching y'all excuse me today but I feel a breakthrough it ain't the carpet but it's your neighborhood it's your family it's your household that's why he fills you full of the Holy Ghost give some money high five say neighbor I got power 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 in my hands power in my mind power in my feet I feel the Holy Ghost give some money high five say I got influence I got influence it's all over me I've got the power you ain't got to have a degree in preaching you ain't got to have a pulpit you ain't got to have a title you got the Holy Ghost I wish I had an army of Holy Ghost filled people that'll get up and march and let the devil know you don't control Washington you don't control the situation in the world you don't control but when I rise with the people of God where are the people of God let the redeemed of the Lord say Woo! 
give somebody a high five for the second to the last time. Say, neighbor, it ain't about shouting. It's about getting something done. It's about changing the life. It's about turning the world Whoa, upside down. Turn it over. Turn it over. Give somebody a high five for the last time. Said, turn it over. Turn it upside down. Shout. Praise. But after you finish, get in the world and tell the world, ready or not, here I come. Ready or not, here we come with a new anointing, fresh word, power. Shake somebody's hand. Say it's our time now. didn't die on the cross for me to have a Rolls Royce. I don't, I don't need to be saved to have a Ferrari. It ain't got nothing to do with being saved. And Jesus didn't fill me with the Holy Spirit for me just to be shouting in church. Sit down, I'm the only one working. Please. The frustration comes. You don't know the you don't know the pain I have when I can't come to Bible class. When I'm not well enough to get out here. You don't know the recrimination that I have when I'm not on my job. And, and people say to me all the time, you know, you gotta take care of yourself. In the context of taking care of myself to serve. But taking care of myself at the expense of serving is to save my life and not lose it. It's a very critical difference. If I'm saving my life at the expense of service, then I've missed my calling. I was saying to a group of preachers the other day when they were complaining about all that they go through and all that they have to do, I, I, I took them back to the Godfather when, uh, 
when Hyman Roth, Hyman Roth was talking to Michael Corleone, and he said, this is what we decided to do. This is the life we chose. You understand what I'm saying? So, so since we have chosen this life, then we have to live with whatever it brings because this is the life we were called to do. The problem is we believe that we're serving God when we come to church. So our service to God is coming to church. No. We come to church to worship, to be empowered, to go into the world and make a difference. Talk to me, children of God. I mean, talk to me now. If you haven't signed up for something to make someone else's life better, you're not serving God. And he has made you an enormous blessing. You think you went through all you've been through just to sit around and, 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 and brag about how you got brought out? No, you, it happened for you to tell others, for you to touch other people's lives. For every time you put some money aside for yourself, you got somebody else in your mind. So here's what we end up doing. We end up being the greatest praying people. Now, hasn't it sound real weird to you when these kids are being gunned down in school all over the place? Hasn't it now come and sounded really ridiculous for people who can make